Hello friends and welcome back to Build Odd Acres. And today we're going to have what I would consider a very special episode, but my father would consider a pretty normal one. But so today we're going to talk about my tractor, the 1985 Case Ingersoll 220. Stay tuned. As we said in the previous video, if you haven't seen the 448 video, please go check that out. That gives a more in-depth history of the Case Ingersoll line. There was three main series of the Case Ingersoll line. There was the low pros, like this 220, which has 12 inch back tires. There was the high wheelers, which had 16 inch rear rims. And then they had the high loaders, which were purpose built loaders, which had 15 inch rims in the back. So today we're going to focus on the Low Pro, specifically the 220. The Low Pros came in a number of sizes, 10 horsepower like this 220 being the smallest, all the way up to a 226, and then later on when they switched over to the 3000s they went even higher. But for the 200 series, the 16 horse Onan was the biggest model, which was the 226, and then the 220 was the smallest model other than the 210. So for the lineup for the low pros, the sizes were the 210, the 220, the 222, the 224, and then the 226. The 226 was the only one of them with a two-cylinder engine. It was also the only one with an Onan engine. All the other ones had Gord K-Series engines. And now, obviously, the last digit is the horsepower. So the 210, 220s, such as this one, were 10 horsepower. 222s were 12. 224s were 14. Then obviously the 226s were 16. And now the 210 is a relatively unique tractor because it's the only Cape Singersaw Garden tractor without the famous hydraulic drive. It has regular gears. But other than that, the 210 and the 220 are nearly identical. 210 also has an Armstrong lift to pick up the deck, whereas the 220 has a hydraulic lift for the implements, which is nice. You know, say you're doing like snow plowing, you need to pick it up 20 times during the course of plowing. It makes a difference not having to pick that up 20 times or so. Yeah, so the 210 was basically the only garden tractor offered by Case and Ingersoll that wasn't relatively reliant on hydraulics. But like we said, these have the Kohler K-Series, which are used in a lot of different tractors. Very famous, very robust engine. Back from the 70s and 80s, it has 16 by 6.5 by 8 front tires, 23 by 8.5 by 12 rear tires. We have the D8 cast iron weights in this one. So me and Brett did a custom plow project for this, which I'll post pictures up. We had a 44-inch case plow. We actually painted it white with the striping to look like the black frame plows. Black frame model, which would have been the 1984 year, had white seats, white implements, it was kind of a unique and series. It has this black and white stripe instead of what you saw in the 86 448, which was white or So actually something unique about this is, I don't know if you guys ever knew this, but on the 84 model year K Singer Cells, and it was also with some very late 83s and early 85s, as my dad's black frame 448 was. They have black frames, but this one doesn't. It's orange. So it's what I love. It's what I lovingly refer to as a Franken tractor, because it has all the black frame stuff except for the frame, which is orange. So it's not an 85, like a regular 85, because then it'd have all 85 stuff. And it's not a regular 84 because then it would have the black frame. So it's basically what happened is Case Ingersoll had leftover 84 parts and they decided to throw it on this, but they didn't have any more low pro frames, black frame. So it got the regular frame, which I think is quite interesting, personally. So one of my favorite features that all of the Case 200 and 400 series have, as well as the 3000s, 4000s, 
is the high drive hydraulic drive system and the snap fast hookup system which Brett is showing you right now is basically there's two pins you pull out put your implement on snap the pins and you're good to go so you can change from a snow plow to a snow blower to a mower deck fairly quickly in a matter of once you know what you're doing you can do it in five ten minutes most times by yourself a lot of brands like the see is they like but there's a lot of bolts you got to disconnect and it takes much longer it's much more of a process to change implements whereas this is much quicker Yes, you can tell when they designed the snap fast system, they intended for it to be idiot proof almost, that it is so simple to do it. That you can quite literally, with maybe three or four bullets, not even kidding, swap stuff out in five, 10 minutes. It's really, really nice. And you have implements that will fit tractors in a you know, 30, 40 year period. So some brands like John Deere, for example, a specific model to model year to year. So an implement you had and then you get a new track and now all of a sudden none of your implements fit. That's not the case with the cases, no pun intended. So if you got a 1974 case or a 2000 Ingersoll, the implements all fit on each other, which is really a nice feature that they incorporated the same hookup system for all of their implements and they didn't change over the course of several decades. Like the big brother high wheels, these low pros have two ranges. So it has a two speed rear end, which is really nice for doing work. You know, sometimes you want to go slow if you're doing a lot of serious work. Other times you might want to go fast if you want to zip from place to place if you have a big property like we do here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this tractor has been really good for us. We've had it for... Since I was, what, six? Yeah, it's probably 10 years ten or so. Years. Brett's 16 now. Yeah. So I was driving the truck in the previous video. But these tractors really earned their keep. They're super rugged. They're built like little tanks. Solid steel construction. I mean, is you know easily serviceable, pretty easy to work on. It's not real intricate or detailed, so I would highly recommend. If you're looking for an older garden tractor, it's going to be easy to work on, not cost you a ton of money. The other nice thing about the case Ingersolls, the case Low Pros, as well as the high wheel lower horsepower models, is they have the Kohler mm -hmm. case series, which is one of the easier small engines to work on, to rebuild parts availability, cost of parts. Like the Onans are a nice, smooth running, powerful engine, but they're much harder to get parts for and they're much more expensive. Whereas the K-Series, because they were used in so many different tractors, there's a lot of companies that make aftermarket and, reprodu and reproduction case parts for the Kohler K-Series. And one final thing I'd like to mention is, some of you viewers may be thinking, oh, this tractor's 10 horse, it's useless to me not so fast so maybe seven years ago we had a tractor tug of war which wasn't really a tug of war we were pulling dead weights with maybe them. we'll put some, some pictures of that in the video too This managed to pull the exact same amount of weight as my grandfather's 17 horsepower simplicity 7117. Which also on top of having seven more horsepower had probably an extra what, 500 pounds on this? So it was a physically bigger machine, had more weights on it and had the deck on it. And so it just goes to show that it's not that power is the only thing that matters because this is still a very capable machine despite the fact that it only has 10 horsepower. Speaking of power, you'll notice that this has Carlisle True Power lug tires in the back. We have X-Track snowblower tires in the front, which a lot of times you'll also see the uh, Snow Hog, which are both Carlisle snowblower tire. So this is really set up for ultimate traction to do tough jobs. I mean, we've done quite a bit with this plowed snow we've I mean we'll put a post we'll post up a quick video of Brett plowing I mean this thing just pushed into the pile like a like a little bison I wouldn't probably so much recommend this 10 horsepower model if you're gonna run a blower a blower or a big deck because those are where you really need the power is to run belt driven implements but if you're pushing a plow or you're pulling a trailer 
or you're you know pulling a land plow that high horsepower really doesn't matter for those kind of chores it's torque that you need which is where tractors shine the higher horsepower models are really better for the belt driven implements or if you're running a pto implement off the hydraulic system but for anything else for any tugging or pushing jobs these little 10 horse and 12 horse model case tractors really get the job done. really do the job quite well as a matter of fact between this and my father's 18 horsepower Ingersoll 448 I've noticed very little difference in terms of how much they can pull despite the fact that his 448 has almost double the horsepower now grand there is a little bit of a difference but that also could be chalked up to the 448 has a lot bigger rear tires than yeah, the bigger tires and the high wheelers give you a lot more traction, so it's really not fair to compare uh, this versus those. But these are going to be, you know, a little more, they're going to be lower to the ground. They were really designed more for entry level. I don't want to say entry level, but the high wheelers were geared at serious gardeners and big property owners, whereas these were geared towards the more everyday person. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, you know, they're just as rugged, they're the same design components is the high wheelers there's a little smaller lower to the ground a little physically you know smaller. less capable but but also another nice thing about them is they because they are designed for the every man there are a lot more of them and examples of them are typically cheaper than 400 series models yeah it seems like everyone wants the big wheel models which you know I don't blame them they look cooler they have bigger tires so you can get these for quite a bit more reasonable prices than you can the Big Wheel Brothers. You know, say uh, say my father's 440H, just as an arbitrary example, something that's right here. That would probably run you about, what, $1,500? Yeah, for a good example in running condition with maybe one or two implements, you're going to be talking 1500 maybe even up as much as two grand here in New England. Whereas I think you could probably find one of these for more like 800 to 1200 so and the 1200 ones talking, are in really good condition so you're too. talking roughly half the price and it's really 90 to 95 percent is capable so in my opinion being five percent less capable is worth it for having to pay half the price so for me when i got this this was just as cool as anything else it really was and it still is I just like it though, I do. And I think it's a very capable machine considering the power, the weight, the cost, all of the above. So if putting a hitch on is your thing, these can have sleeve hitches directly go onto them. And they also do make the three point hitches which fit the low pro series. What you're gonna want is the HH34 three point hitch which is what was on the 448 if you saw in that video. The older style 26 series hitches was specifically meant for high wheelers. The 34 series was meant for all three series, 600s, 400s, 200s, etc. So this is set up with this regular tow hitch. I actually do have a custom light bar that goes on here. It we'll has to post pictures of that with this video. So that's gonna have some rear weight and it has a loop with a, a light it's mainly set up for plowing. So, so when we redid the plow on the front to make the white frame plow, I also made the light bar so there'd be extra light. So when you're plowing, there's plenty of light. It's LED light, so it doesn't draw a lot of juice, but it's really bright and nice crisp white light. So in those snowy blizzard conditions, you can see what you're doing. It does, and it does make a real difference. It does, especially having a light above your head instead of below you. So we hope you've enjoyed today's video on the 220 case. We hope you learned something. Hope you found it informative. And as always, have a good one. See you in the next one. Bye.